Uh, Naveen, tell us a bit more about NLP code. You got to unmute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> so my journey kind of parallels the others. You know, I spent some time in the corporate world and to me, you know, that as you mentioned, you know, what is the idea that you really want to solve that defines your next five to 10 years. And that indeed, you know, uh, took me last couple of years at Microsoft, you know, as to if I really want to do something, what is it that going to be that Microsoft one day or Google another day or Amazon another day, I don't end up doing, you know, ironically, you know, I chose something that now they are all doing, you know, but at the time, you know, when I left, uh, you know, search was just happening and it was, you know, either keyword searches, you know, or it was uh, page ranking systems that were the, you know, the two major search techniques that are out there. And we wanted to do something very different. We wanted it to be contextual, you know, and, uh, the idea was, can we uh, just try to get the context from what user is looking for? So given, you know, a user keyword, rather than finding out what other users have searched around those keywords, we actually look for the actual sentences and phrases in the corpus and put some value around that sentences and phrases. And that was essentially the natural language processing whether these words are nouns, if they are pronouns, whether they are verb defining, you know, relating to pronouns and those neighborhoods actually, we attached more value than the, you know, other words and we built this knowledge graph. And essentially that became genesis of what we did. And we spent next actually three, four years, in fact, fighting the patent office, but we ended up getting, you know, about, you know, 18 different, you know, claims and then we extended those claims to add even, you know, user feedback so we can actually apply, you know, user feedback into. So we have in situ, you know, feedback, correction, all that built into our technology. And uh, going, you know, relating it back to what Dinesh was seeing, you know, that it is, you know, okay, great. You know, we build this platform. Are there any use cases? You know, is that really valuable? Is it solving real problems? And more importantly, are people willing to pay for it? And I think, you know, that is really very, very important question. And we, you know, coming from a very deep technology platform, we were very lucky to find uh, some very specific use cases. I mean, I happen to be in Seattle, which also actually, as you may know, not only just the IT hub, but it is also a biotechnology hub. We have some of the key, you know, uh, biological research companies here. In fact, the Center for Infectious Disease Research is here. The Cancer Research Center is here. Neurological Neurosurgery uh, Center is here. And I happen to know some of uh, my friends, as you mentioned, and I play squash. You know, that's a great connection to have. And, you know, one of the, uh, actually the head of, you know, uh, life sciences or the infectious disease research, you know, we were having this discussion and they said, Naveen, you know, we can apply your engine to our problems. And, you know, he brought up a very specific problem with that, you know, when they do a research, you know, human body has about 800 different proteins. And when they start, you know, research, majority of infectious disease research, you know, start at a very molecular level. They have these yeast, you know, which has very primitive form. And they select only eight to 10 proteins on which they want to do a research. And they want to basically build, you know, antibodies that can fight a particular protein set. You know, it's all of, I mean, actually what is happening with coronavirus is, you know, very relevant to that as well. Whether it was, you know, this particular center, by the way, has been working on Zika, Dengue, malaria, and recently Ebola, as well as recently on coronavirus. And I mean, coming from, you know, an IT world, this was a good, you know, uh, introduction to me into biology. And the challenge they had was, you know, how they can, you know, just whittle it down from 800 odd, you know, thousands of these proteins down to few set on which they should build their hypothesis. So they actually apply our technology or our search into the existing publications into, you know, scientific media. So they can go ahead and apply our search engine and find all the relevant, you know, research. We can go really specifically drain down to protein pathways, protein transformation, 
protein to protein interactions and surface that as a knowledge graph that very quickly provides them references to the very specific articles they're looking into. So that's a very, you know, uh, you know, applicable use case, solving a real problem. So that has been essentially our driving factor. And from there, you know, we have evolved into uh, essentially a team collaboration, uh, information extraction suite and pipeline. And we are very excited about bringing our next product in that line. So that's our journey. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful, Naveen. It's a great work and great application, especially in terms of saving lives and making people realize the importance of these algorithms. And because a lot of people are searching on Google with a lot of different styles of writing and not everybody's style is, is comprehensible and you're making it comprehensible by going into the depth of the natural language of the people and deciphering it, making it comprehensible by the systems and therefore they're getting the right results. Great work. Uh, you mentioned that you've already filed a couple of patents in this domain. Why has, so what's your why for filing the patent applications? Uh, that's a very important part, uh, question. So, you know, in my opinion, or at least, you know, when we started work on this, one of the important reasons for filing the patent was actually, you know, twofold. One, and to us, that's more important, is having our own def defense. So this is a very strong defense mechanism for us. At least back then, you know, me coming out of Microsoft, one of the big players, you know, they had, you know, as you know, Bing search engine already. Uh, we have Google, which has its own search engine. We wanted to do something, uh, you know, different, unique. And we believed, you know, uh, having our own patent in the space will provide us a defense in the long run, you know, so for example, today there is GP2, GPT3. There are a lot of these, you know, uh, natural language based, uh, uh, you know, they have gone into billions of variables, you know, uh, to provide uh, these searches, you know, so, you know, fair enough, you know, they can do a very, very good job. So to us, having our own patent gives us this legal defense that you know, this is something that we have built, we have in invented, and we actually have a patent dating back to 2014, you know, this is seven years ago, right? So, so we can point, you know, that yes, you know, we actually have a history of working in this space. And, you know, if it comes to, we are very willing to cross license, you know, we, we are very willing to allow people to use our technology as long as there is an acknowledgement that this is our technology. And secondly, I think uh, another important part of going with the patent is, I think this is probably core to your discussion as well is, you know, when it comes to valuation of a company, you know, they also look at, you know, what is strategic about a given company, whether it's a talent acquisition, whether it's, you know, customer acquisition, whether it's, you know, the attach rate, or whether there is, you know, a, a strategic uh, component, the technology. And to us, you know, having this into our portfolio gave us that additional oomph. So, there you go. Excellent. Bang on, bang on uh, on it. Thank you so much, Naveen, for that.